watched pot never boils. Quite a phrase. Don't you think you ought to look in on your son? The little monster's asleep and I'm delighted. I choose my words with infinite precision. Roger, you're a fool. Not one tenth a fool you are, my dear. Look at you standing at the window looking out in the night, waiting for someone who should never have been asked to come here in the first place. She'll work out very well, I'm sure. Doing what? Holding my little son's hand, comforting you in the shutters creak. Elizabeth, with all our ghosts, we don't need any strangers in this house, and you know it. I think I can be the judge of that. But you don't even know the girl. Elizabeth, I'm your brother. I'm thinking only of your own welfare. Why bring somebody all the way up from New York to do something we're perfectly capable of handling ourselves? Because I choose to do so. Oh, come to your senses, Elizabeth. When the girl arrives, give her a month's salary and tell her to go back where she came from. Why don't you open the doors and let the whole town come trooping through the house and have done with it? The girl will stay. You are a fool, Elizabeth. Yes, you are. Inviting problems... The only to... problem I've invited is standing before me at this moment. I have asked Miss Winters to live here and she'll stay. Planning to jump, are you? You wouldn't be the first, you know. You're Roger Collins, aren't you? Correct. Brother of Elizabeth, father of David, and terribly sorry if I startled you. I'm getting used to surprises, Mr. Collins. Oh, we're quite a strange crew, Miss Winters. That is the name, isn't it? Yes. Strange, but I think you'll find most of us are rather nice. It's quite different from New York, isn't it? I hope you won't be too lonely here. If I am, I'll blame it on you. Me? Mrs. Stoddard said you were the one that arranged for me to come here. Oh, you don't say. It's true, isn't it? If Elizabeth says so, then it must be true. Well, I didn't expect... Do you know that on a cloudless day, you can see 20 miles out to sea? I was a boy, I used to bring a picnic lunch out here and dream for hours. Maybe I can do the same with your son. With David? Doesn't he like picnics? I'm not exactly certain what he does like, Miss Winters. But if you intend to follow that plan, do yourself a favor. Stay away from the edge. Oh, really, Mr. Collins? Roger. I much prefer Roger. And I think you ought to be going in. We don't want the brightest thing in this house down with the coal the first day. I'm stronger than I look, Mr. Collins. Ah. Roger. Look. Those lights. What are they? Oh, probably a freighter on its way to Europe. Funny. They're going all those thousands of miles, and I almost couldn't get here from the railroad station. Oh, I should have come down and meet you in the car. It was very thoughtless. I was lucky. A man got off the train with me. He, he got a taxi for me. He said he knew you. Knew me? Yes. Devlin. What did you say? Mr. Collins, please. Did you say Devlin? Yes. Burke? Devlin? Yes. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. Mr. Collins, what is it? Mr. Collins! Coffee left in the hopper? Few cups. Real strong, though. I'll take my chances. It's your stomach. Mm. 
Say, Maggie, how's your father these days? Same as always. Full of sound and fury. <laughs> you want some pie? Mm. All right. He um, picks you up sometimes, doesn't he, when you're closing? If he's in the mood. Why? I might have a buyer for one of his paintings. Well, that would be nice. Why don't you try the house? Oh, I did. I rang the bell a couple of times, but nobody answered. You should have banged on the door. You know my father. A little celebration, and he sleeps like there's no tomorrow. Well, banging on doors isn't exactly in my repertoire. Maggie, I have to see your father. It's very important. I wish I could help you, but... You know, Pop, he could have decided to take an overnight hike to Bangor. Uh, we'll be closing in five minutes, so with all due respect, don't take too long. I hear uh, Burke Devlin checked into the hotel tonight. That's right. Have you seen him? Uh-uh. But I understand he really hit it big. What do you mean? Took three rooms on the top floor, handing out big tips. And I remember when he used to pose for Pop. For quarters. You know, it's a funny thing how fond Pop used to be of Burke. He's never mentioned him. Never mentioned his name once in all these years. I really don't think Pop will be coming tonight. But I can't give you any information. Pop's a free soul, you know that. He wanders. Well, you don't mind if I wait a little longer, do you? Really, Mr. Collins, I have to close. That's what I was afraid of. Sorry, Mr. Malloy, but we're closed. Doors open. Well, I know that. Saw your car parked down the street, Roger. I have to talk to you. It's after business hours, Malloy. It has nothing to do with the fleet. At least I hope not. Oh, of course. The manager of our fishing fleet talks business only with my sister. Roger, this is important. I see. And the extent of my participation in family business affairs is of no importance at all. Delicately put, Malloy. I just heard Burke Devlin's come back. And? Is that all you had to say? No, Burke was born and raised in Collinsport. Why shouldn't he be permitted to return if he wants to? And you're not worried? Why should I be? Ten years is a long time. I'm sure Bert and I can be good friends again. Do you really believe that? Look, Malloy, I have much more important things than to worry about people's goings and comings, especially an ex-convict's. But thank you anyway for your concern. Roger, you're either a much braver man than I thought you were, or a much bigger fool. Good night, Reggie. you to come downstairs with me now. And I want you to go back to bed. Do as I say now. What do you think you're doing? 
Elizabeth, you're my sister, not my warden. Roger, that girl was brought here to care for your son. Your son, Roger, not you. What's coming now? The lesson on morals? No, not a lesson on morals. Just a simple statement. You repeat tonight's episode, and I'll have to ask you to pack your things and leave. Elizabeth, all I wanted to do was talk to the girl. Then knock on her door. I want you to remember that Victoria Winters is not only an employee, she is a guest in my house, and I want her treated with as much respect as... As much respect as you would give Burke Devlin? Ooh. Burke Devlin. Well, what's he Don't got... tell me you've forgotten the name. What's he got to do with this? It seems that your little Miss Winters wasn't the only one who got off the train tonight. She had a fellow passenger. Burke? Yes. Somehow I knew he'd come back. Well, what do you intend to do about it? Nothing. Nothing? You can't be serious. Why do you think he's in Collinsport? It's his home. Listen, listen to me. Burke is not that poor kid that once worked for us. Not anymore. He's made a lot of money. What happened between you and Burke Devlin was finished ten years ago. But then why do you think he's here? I don't know. That's what I wanted to ask her. Miss Winters? She was with him on the train, Elizabeth. They rode to the hotel together. He might have said something to her. I don't want her involved. But she is involved. She's here. Roger. I warned you, didn't I, Elizabeth? I warned you not to bring anyone into this house. Roger, keep your voice down. I'm fed up with your telling me what I can do and what I can't do. I'm as much a member of this family as you are. Roger, if you can't control Elizabeth, your voice. someone has come back to destroy me, maybe to kill me, and I'm not going to just sit here and do nothing. You say you're a Collins. Well, then act like one. If there's a problem to face, examine it. Look into it, but don't... don't reject it. Shall I do as you do? Shall I hide my head and wait for it to disappear? I'm not prepared to spend my life the way you have, sitting in this house, waiting, never going out. That's not my way. And it never will be. A beautiful speech, Uncle Roger. Just beautiful. We really should have this door soundproof, don't you think? Just a little family discussion, kitten. Nothing for you to worry about. Why don't you go on back up to bed? I will. As soon as you answer one question. Who's trying to kill you? Carolyn, how long have you been outside that door? Not long enough or I wouldn't have to ask. Who is it? Burke Devlin? Where did you hear that name from? It was Vicky. She mentioned it. Did I say something wrong? What did she say? Only that she told Uncle Roger Mr. Devlin had given her lift from the railroad station. And you almost blew a fuse. Oh, I told her she must have been mistaken. That you don't jump that easily. Unless you have a good reason. Darling, this is not your affair. How can you say that if someone's trying to hurt Uncle Roger? Your mother's right, kitten. Besides, it's, it's nothing I can't handle myself, really. So what was all the yelling about? Well... Who is Burke Devlin, anyway? A man we used to know. He's not here to harm anyone. Kitten, do you happen to know if Miss Winters is away? With all this racket, how could she help it? Well, I wonder if you'd mind going upstairs and asking her to come down. Roger? If Carolyn doesn't go up and bring her down, Elizabeth, I'll do it myself. Ro Carolyn, I want you to go to bed now. I'm quite serious about this, Elizabeth. I intend to talk with Miss Winters tonight, one way or the other. What can you possibly expect Well, to let learn? me be the judge of that. Whoa. I just want to know. Whoa, both of you. I told you to go to bed. I will, Mother. But what about Vicky? I suppose you might as well ask her to come down. Believe me, kitten, all I want to do is ask her a few questions. All right. I'll tell her. As long as you insist on doing this, at least let me talk to her. I don't care who talks to her, as long as we find out. Come in, Miss Winters. Sit down. <clears throat> We're very sorry to disturb you so late, but I'm sure this won't take more than a moment. Carolyn said Mr. Collins wanted to talk to me. Yes, about a man named Burke Depp. Oh. You met her on the train from New York. 
No. Oh, but you said you did. Roger, please. I said I met him at the Collinsport station after I got off the train. He gave me a lift to the hotel. And of course, you told him you were coming here to Collinsport. I saw no reason not to. Did he say anything about us? Mrs. Stoddard, I don't understand. Now, Miss Winters, my sister asked you a question. Did Burke Devlin say anything about any of us? Nothing in particular. Did he tell you why he came back to Collinsport? No. Thank you very much, Miss Winters. I think we can all go to bed. Oh, I think not, Elizabeth. Miss Winters, you wouldn't mind keeping a lonely man company for a little while longer, would you? Well, it's awfully late. Five I... minutes, ten. No longer, I promise you. I'm really quite a nice fellow. Good night, Elizabeth, and don't worry. I promise to be on my very best behavior. Roger, I don't like... Sleep well, dear. Good night, Miss Winters. Framing. Good morning, you lovely people. Hi, kitten. Mmm, delicious. How about some of my lousy coffee? Oh, I don't have time. I have to get into town. How are you this morning, Miss Winters? Very well, thank you. Vicky's sore at you, Uncle Roger. Well, then, maybe a letter from home will help cheer her up a bit. Tie with the past always makes the future look brighter. Thank you. Uh. Oh, Miss Winters, I want to apologize for last night. I'd had a bit of a shock, and I'm afraid I took it out on you. I'm dreadfully sorry, and I hope you'll forgive me. Please say that you will, or else I'll throw myself off the cliff. You don't give me much <laughs> choice, do you? Good. We're friends, then. I'll see you later. Oh, by the way, has anyone seen David around this morning? I stopped in at his room, but he wasn't there. Huh? Lucky you. Hmm. Well, if you see him, Miss Winters, give him a kick for me, will you? There's a good girl. Well, Mr. Collins. Did you hear any sobbing last night? Vicky says she heard someone crying at about two in the morning. Dreams, Miss Winters. Nothing but dreams. Happy breakfast. You see, Vicky, are you going to leave us just because of a dream? I don't think you ought to have that now. You taken to breaking into people's homes? The door was unlocked. I waited. I wanted to talk with you. But without this. Look, if I'm supposed to talk to you, that's when I'll need this the most. To life, Collins the long, unhappy, and miserable life that lies ahead for both of us. The sustenance of my soul, provider of my courage, destroyer of my talents. Where were you last night? Nowhere. Everywhere. Perhaps I was here? I came here to see you last night. No one was home. Well, the fact of the matter is, Collins, that even when I'm here, nobody's home. Don't play games with me, Evans. I spent a couple of hours looking for you. No more. I beg your pardon? Sit down. Hey, give me that bottle. Not until we're through talking. Sit down. This is my home, and I'll ask you not to forget that. This may not be a fancy castle like you live Do in. Do you may... know that Burke Devlin has come back to town? Yes. Now, give me the bottle. He arrived last night in a 9 o'clock train from New York. Fifteen minutes later, he checked in at the Collinsport Hotel. When did you find that out? Last night. I was near the hotel when he arrived. You've known since that time, and you didn't try to get in touch with I me? I wanted time to think... We got a lot to think about, you and me. Ten years. Ten years of torment and anguish that I'd hoped. No. I wasn't here last night. I went for a walk along the shore. I looked out at the ocean. And I wept. For Burke and for me. Even a little for you. You don't have to cry for him, Evans. He's a very wealthy man now. What good is money? It means nothing. You didn't always think so. That's true. Well, what do you plan to do now? Do? About Devlin! You don't think he's come back just to visit his hometown and to see his old friends again, do you? No. no. And I, I remember when you were one of those friends. Evans, I'm convinced that Burke intends to hurt me in some way. Revenge and retribution, yes, I would say so. And I am going to protect myself every way I can. I can handle all the problems that come to me directly but not those over which I have no control. I see. So then, you want to know what I intend to do, huh? 
Precisely. Well, you don't have to be afraid of my actions. You don't have to be afraid of any of my actions. I am what I've become. I'll do nothing. Miss Winters! You went up to the house and saw Miss Winters? I told you I was looking for you. You also just told me that you weren't going to do anything. Do you call going up to Collingwood not doing anything? I was careful. Careful? The one thing we'd always agreed upon was that you would never go anywhere near that house. What did you tell her? And well, I wasn't sure you knew Brooke was at heart. I'm not too wild about myself or about you. But I thought the least I could do was warn you. What did you tell her? Nothing, just that, that Sam was looking for you. That's all I said. Did you mention Burke's name? No. I don't believe you. Look, use my phone. Call her and ask her yourself. All I said was Sam was looking for you. That's all I said. Hello? Oh, hello, Carolyn, dear. Listen, is Miss Winters there? Oh, uh, how long ago? Did she say where she was going? <laughs> no, kitten, it's not important. I'll see you later. Where are you going? I'm going to find Miss Winters before she finds Burke Devlin. Of that, Roger, lately. It's a very proper sisterly remark, but I'm in no danger of becoming an alcoholic on the strength of one drink. Is Miss Winters still here? Yes, she's upstairs in her room. Did you know that your Miss Winters was in town today? Yes. Do you know why she was there? Yes, to make a private telephone call. A private meeting is more like it, Liz, with our ubiquitous friend, Burke Devlin. Burke? That's right. Burke and Miss Winters. Are you sure? Well, you mean she didn't tell you about it? Well, I'll tell you, Liz. Burke is filled with hate, and he's going to use every angle he can find to tear us down, including that 20-year-old girl I warned you not to bring into this house. What makes you think she can tell him anything that would harm us? Are you sure she can't? Elizabeth, what do you know about this girl? Why did you hire her? To take care of David. Is that the real reason? The best way to take care of that boy would be to put him in an institution and you know it. How can you talk that way about your own son? Because it's the truth. And you know it's the truth. I won't permit you to speak that way about David. You mean you won't let me be honest? Ten years ago, Roger. Ten years ago, you and I had an agreement. After the trouble with Burke, you left Collinsport, and I sent you money. Every month for ten years, and you promised never to come back. But you are back. And this is still my house, and don't you forget it. You wouldn't let me forget it. And there's another thing you better remember. You're here for one reason. For one reason only. David. And I cannot allow you to attack David like this because of Burke Devlin or anyone else. Is that clear? been there. Get to your feet and answer me. I told you to get to your feet. You're not 
not going to send me away. I wish I... All right, David. Get to your room. Aunt Elizabeth would throw you out of the house if you tried, wouldn't she? I told you to go to your room. She sent you away once. I heard she sent you away. All right, David. Everybody wants to send you away. Everybody. What are you talking about? I remember. I remember that big fight you had with Mother. She wanted to send you away, but she couldn't because of Bert Devlin. David, you shouldn't make up stories like that. It's not a story, it's true. But you know you've never heard me mention the name of Burke Devlin until here, today, in this room. I heard it lots of times when you and Mother used to fight. What else did you hear? Nothing. I want to know what else you heard, David. Let me go. You're Let me go. going to tell me what you heard, every word of it. Only his name, that's all. Only his name. You rotten little liar. Let me go. Mother, Mother. What are you doing to him? You stay out of this, Liz. Don't let him hurt me. Don't worry, no one's going to hurt you. He was hiding behind a chair. He heard every word we said. That's no reason to... David, why don't you go along to your room? We'll talk about this later. You're not going to let him send me away, are you? Of course not. Now go along. I hope Bert Devlin comes back here. And I hope he gets even with you. I hope he gets even. Um.